All right, guys, welcome back to Chaos TV's live coverage of the Corsair Vengeance Cup. I'm Metis, joined by Enzi, and we are right into the action, as we said we would be here, as uh, both TRI and Navi appear not to really bother too heavily with the early uh, kind of team fights, Enzi. And to be honest, in the CVC, I don't think we've seen a single game where both teams have just kind of met each other in a 5v5 at the beginning. It's always kind of been, if first blood goes down, it's just one person's kind of mistake and they get caught out. Looks to be pretty much identical this time as well. No early team fight's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the last time we actually casted events uh, on a with absolute legend, yeah, uh, we had the fastest kill ever, which was 35 seconds or 40 seconds flat. So, what an achievement! <laughs> yeah, I do actually remember that. As you say, it was incredibly, incredibly fast, but we're not going to have a rinse and repeat of that one. They're going to have Urgot and Soraka at that bot lane, just trying to take down these golems, of course, as Mundo is going to be top, actually picking up that blue first, which is, uh, you know, a lot of Mundos do uh, kind of prefer that red buff first for the ganking phase, but obviously Arani here with that Mundo is just going to take blue instead, going to be popping towards that top lane. Olaf needs to be careful because Warwick and... Uh, Mundo are going to be hot on his trail. Having said that though, Ward is down the river. Very nice Ward indeed. So Olaf knows exactly what was coming up for him and he's not going to overextend too much. In the meantime, Mundo will pull back. So let's have a quick look at this bot lane. As I said before, Urgot and Soraka picked up the golems. Now going to go down to the bot lane. They're going to be facing off against Tristana and Janna, which is a very nice team comp all in itself. Uh, Tristana, of course, is very, very strong that mid to kind of late game once you get some farm up. And Urgot, more than likely, Enzi, is going to be building relatively tanky. Probably going to get a frozen heart alongside the likes of a brutalizer as well i am just i am just waiting for the udia comment to come out from uh, Urgot. i think we should give these guys a free warning uh vince likes to call ergo udia and udia ergo so yeah if he does say anything like that then yeah yeah just a pre-warning i kind of dribble with those two names i do know who the characters are before anyone calls me a noob or a a tard cast or anything like that, I know which one is which. I just get the two mixed up in my senile old age. But yeah, so let's have a quick uh, look at that mid lane and give them two some love. You're going to have Kennen facing off against Ziggs. Uh, Ziggs, as Enzi stated before, he doesn't like him one little bit. So I would love to see Ziggs pick up loads of kills in this game with Citizen. Of course, Citizen's an incredibly strong mid player. We've seen this time and time again so far in the CVC tournament that he has dominated that mid lane. So definitely interested to see if he's going to be able to pull that one off once again here. Top lane looked like there could be some uh, action going down there as Olaf is going to try his best against Warwick. And I think this is the first time we've actually seen the Brawlaf skin coming out, Enzi. Awesome stuff. I was actually going to mention that to you. I was like, oh, he's going to notice it. He's going to notice it. And you noticed it. <laughs> Every single time we've seen Olaf played, you're like, I want to see that Brulaf skin. Oh, yeah. And you finally got it, Vince. I think you should personally add him and thank him just for playing with that skin and delete him. <laughs> Oh, I just I love that skin. It is the best skin in the game by far. I, I'm always gonna stick with that as well. But uh, yeah, let's have a quick switch over to that bot lane as we could be seeing that first blood coming into Rackers and solo health is surely gonna be taken down from the Nautilus. Great gank there. And as I said before, Nautilus is one of those characters you really have to watch out for that gank coming down. He has the dredge line, of course, which he's going to try and pop off to get close to his targets. Soraka will be going down, and now Urga all by himself. So first blood to Team Rod Bite Italy. And this is one of those games in Wednesday that a lot of people won't really know who to favour. I'm kind of of the opinion that maybe TRI can pick this one up, and it looks like it's going to be a double frag. Indeed it will be, as Tristana quickly does the rocket jump there, as I'm mid midway through a sentence, so apologies if I kind of just burst onto the scene there. There. But Urgot will be going down as well, so a great start for this bot lane. Of course, Nautilus picked up that first kill, but both Tristana and Janna got an assist put to their name. And uh, now Tristana is just going to keep farming away. In the meantime, at top lane, going to see another gank coming in as well. As suddenly Olaf's going to have to run back. Mundo is hot in pursuit with the Burning Agony. Surely can land the, the Infected Cleaver. In fact, he didn't land it. And now Nautilus is going to come back for yet another gank. Mundo could be going down here. He has popped the Burning Agony, which actually cost some health. Maybe not the greatest of ideas. He is going to get taken out from that Nautilus. Three for zero already. Not looking too good and Nautilus isn't too happy about the kills he's got so far so he's going to try and tower dive that Warwick. Maybe not the greatest of ideas that nearly got the kill but in turn uh, very nearly got took down himself from the turret. Just noticed that Kennen's actually pushed up towards top, so they could potentially be going for this kill onto Warwick. After all, Kennen's going to come in. They're using the lightning rush, and this is going to be another kill to Team Red Bite. Italy wowses these guys. Are so so 
good on those communications. You just saw Ken pushing up towards that top plane. They definitely wanted Warwick dead. They'd marked him for a death, and they got that death in the end. Four for zero after six minutes, Enzi. Wow. What did I tell you guys? Watch out for that Nautilus, because unless you shut him down in the jungle like Moscow 5 did, he is going to run while but top lane that was actually really smart from Olaf um, they did come up for the gang Olaf popped his ghost so he had the option he could even run away but he did get Warwick quite low so he flashed straight towards him uh, not flash just ran straight towards him uh, done that true damage popped the ignite as well Warwick forced the flash away so he had, didn't have a flash at his disposal and luckily the communication with Nautilus was spot on Nautilus came up to help as well managed to get that kill on to uh, uh, Mundo and uh, yeah, it just followed. It was really, really nice stuff. And like I said, Tirai are such a great team. They were na they narrowly based they narrowly lost against Moscow Five. And you know, when you narrowly lose against someone like Moscow Five, you know they're a good team. Yeah, a few people were saying you know Moscow Five were trolling, whatever. But to be completely honest, Tirai looked very, very strong. Tirai were a very, very good team there. And uh, I actually really thought they were kind of hard done by to meet off against Moscow 5 in the first round. Had they not done so, I could definitely see them getting much further in the upper brackets, but as it stands, they have to just kind of deal with what they've been dealt, and uh, right now that is facing off against Navi, so let's have a quick look on those creep scores where we have a bit of a lull in the action. Going to have Nautilus on 2 for 0, went back, he's got an Oracle, so he is going to be trying his best to anti-ward there and just clear those wards out in the river and give his team the map control overall. Also picked up the Heart of Gold and and has a regrowth pendant, so we'll probably be building that into a Philo Stone as soon as he possibly can. Tristana went back and bought up two Doran's Blades and also the Dagger, and we're going to see more action at top here as Warwick is going to be caught out from that Nautilus once again. He is currently level 6. Depth Charge has been used underneath the tower, and that's going to be another kill as we hear the Bromassia to rang out from that Olaf 5-0 now. And Olaf picking that kill up, so looking very strong. He has the Heart of Gold as well, so his gold potent is going to be looking pretty good. A bot lane, Urgot has been dropped as well, Enzi. And this is just looking very one-sided. This is already 6 for 0 after 8 minutes. Wow. Like I said, man, TRI are such a good team. I mean, they... People might say, okay, Musker 5 will troll it, but they really won't. I mean, they had to pull out the likes of Trindamir, get that hyper carry out right at the very end, played Galio as well. They really did try it. TRI put up such a fight. Um, and I think Soraka will actually be going down under the tower there as the exhaust was popped. And Askeladd has to pop that Somnir Hill just to get away there from the minions. So, uh, yeah, TRI looks so dominant right now. There's seven kills to zero. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if Navi can get a few kills back. Obviously, they did introduce that, uh, that little update. You know, when you kill someone at a higher level, you do gain more gold and XP, I do believe. So, uh, maybe that's going to come into a factor. But from my personal experience, that update has done absolutely nothing. Yeah, I mean, I do remember that with Freak and uh, I apologise for not remembering his name, but the Patch Guy. I'll just call him the Patch Guy. Morello. <laughs> uh, Morello, yeah, that's the one. And uh, basically, they were they were saying, look, League of Legends seems a bit too snowbally right now, so you want to allow people to be able to get their way back into the game if they are way behind at the beginning. So let's hope from Navi's perspective that is going to come to fruition here, and they are going to be able to pull this one back. It looks once again like Warwick is going to be in all kinds of trouble. Here comes the Olaf and Nautilus combination. Warwick tried his best to get his way out there but once again dredge line use and Warwick's gonna go down here from that combo at top wow he's died three times already not looking too good for him Olaf is only two or so creeps ahead of him kills and assists looking very strong Warwick level six Olaf currently level seven looking very good indeed mid lane saw some serious pressure being applied to Kennen from Ziggs and I think mid lane's pretty much the only lane that Navi are currently winning you're gonna have Ziggs on level nine Kennen having to pull back on level eight what's the creep score looking like Ziggs on 107 and Kennen on 71 so he is definitely by far and away leading in that lane unfortunately for him though everywhere else is one-sided stacked against his team I really think it's just going to come down to Citizen really, you know, pushing that lane out and trying to help the other lanes because, you know, Warwick's really behind. But, you know, the main game changer right now, just like when they played Moscow 5, is Nautilus. I mean, he's been either a part or been in uh, a fight and it's five, five, five kills he's either got or, you know, he's been in. He's currently 3, 0, and 2, so he's got the 2 assists and the 3 kills. He is going to get that blue. Um, so, yeah, you know, Vayne's is doing such a good job. Uh, at that Nautilus, just ganking top very, very well. And, you know, Warwick, 0-3, to three, that is that really is saying something. 
Yeah, Warnock is, is one of those kind of terror solo top plays, but if you can neutralize him, he's not too good. And I think that's exactly the mentality be between Nautilus and Olaf here is try and take Warwick out of this game before it even starts. And so far, you have to give them props. They've done just that. And uh, Olaf is trying to max out this Reckless Swing. Currently has four levels in it, so he is doing 280 true damage right now to Warwick. Doesn't matter if he's building the likes of a Ninja Tabby and Cloth Armor. He is going to get cut to shreds from that Olaf. Looks like there could be yet another gank coming in here, but Nautilus has spotted a ward in that tri-bush. This, again, is, he, is one of the beautiful things about taking that Oracle early. You can completely neutralize those wards and just roam around the map. And now, you know, Navi don't really know what Nautilus is doing. They don't know. Is he going to try a dragon right now? Is he going to try a cheeky dragon? Is he going to come and gank that mid lane or maybe try his luck once again at bot but uh, another ward is going to be placed to try bush going to see some action mid shoulder here as both warwick and olaf have pulled down is kenning going to try and do anything answer more than likely no because the uh, minions have been pushed back and it would be kind of dangerous to do so but i think the reason olaf has came down nz is because they are going to try and attempt this dragon no ward coverage on dragon whatsoever from navi they have no idea what's going having said that though a ward has just gone down as i was in mid sentence there from mundos they have more of an idea of what's happening now we're going to see Nautilus trying to pick up that ward and uh, take that vision once again out of Navi's hands. Two wards have been placed in that tri-bush as well. So literally zero visibility for Navi. And I try going to try and capitalize on this now by picking up. It's going to be five versus one if Mundo pushes in. Olaf is just going to push him back there, apply some pressure, not allow anybody on this Navi side to try and push in. You're going to see the Migrant Fennel Bomb used there from Ziggs. Not going to do anything apart from weaken Dragon and allow Try to pick that one up even easier. Gold difference right now, 18.2k to Try, 14.1 to Navi. After 12 minutes, that is a fairly big chunk of difference. And now Nautilus is coming down to that bot lane again. Looks like they could be setting up another potential gank once this uh, minion waves pushes onto the tower. So Urgot really has to be careful. He has no support whatsoever. Straka is on her way back, but it could be too little too late. And here comes Nautilus. Ignite has been used as well. He's going to try and use the swappable Urgot to try and get his way across there, but it's not really going to help him. Surely he's going to get dropped, actually taking much longer to go down than I was expecting. But of course, his swap does give him extra armor and magic riz. Either way, the result is going to be the same. Urgot taken out. Soraka comes to a lane to find out that her AD carry has been completely destroyed and 9-0 already. Yeah, it was quite smart thinking on uh, Urgot's part. You know, he tried to maybe get a kill in retaliation by putting, uh, you know, trying to get away as much. But I, I think his main mistake, you know, when they did come to the tower, he did run away. That allowed the dredge line to be popped very, very nicely. And, uh, you know, even if he did run back to his tower, uh, he could just dredge line towards the tower, then use that armor anyway. So, uh, great stuff coming out once again from Nautilus. It's currently 0 to 9. Uh, really, it's just been pure domination, uh, mainly from that Nautilus, just providing them early ganks, and really the game's just snowballing right now. Um, that, that's all I can really say now, you know, TRI, they're in the driver's seat, they just need to roll at home. And they're going to try and pick up the kill here onto Olaf for Ziggs has came up. Ultimate Infinite Dress has been used for Morak. Ragnarok also taking out the equation with uh, Olaf using that one just to escape. But hey, he did manage to get out of there. But here comes the Ziggs ultimate very nearly landing onto Olaf there. I'm not entirely sure if it actually picked up the kill as Olaf had 361 HP. Let's see how much damage that Mega Inferno Bomb is doing. It's doing about 500. So that indeed would have taken down Olaf there had he have stood in the ultimate. But of course, just moved out of that one in time. Meantime, at bot lane going to have Tristana and Soraka once again trying their best to uh, kill that Urgot. In fact, it's not Soraka, it's Janna. My apologies. And Urgot looking under all kinds of trouble, but he is going to pull back and have the shield up as well, so he should be okay for now. But Mundo is making his way slowly but surely down here to the bot lane. He has landed the cleaver onto Janna. It looks like uh, the Urgot and Soraka were a tiny bit slow to react there. There was potentially a kill on the cards. Urgot has popped his ultimate, but again, this time Mundo's pushed back to the, the tower, so... It's kind of confusing as to what's going on here, Enzi. I can only guess there's a bit of miscommunication, although Mundo yeah. has... Mundo DC, just froze I on think. the spot. Yeah, they, they are asking, Yeah, they're asking in all chat, has he DC'd? And now he's starting to pull back. So I was thinking that's, that's horrible miscommunication, but I apologize to Mundo if it's a case that he lagged out or got DC'd. But it definitely looks strange to me that Urgot, you know, used this swap onto Janna there. Um, thinking maybe they're going to try and, you know, completely obliterate her and then kind of Mundo's just standing there with his finger up his backside, not doing too much. But either way, Urgot and uh, Soraka have definitely been bested in this bot lane. Partially thanks, it has to be said, Enzi, to Nautilus, because those ganks early game were 
are very, very crucial to this bot lane. You can see right now the tower's on 140 HP remaining, and it should be going down relatively soon. And there we go, Mundo has disconnected. You never like to see this as a caster. Yeah, 15 minutes in now, so I don't think that they can call a remake, and I'm definitely sure TRI wouldn't agree to it anyway. I mean, they're nine kills up. Um, you know, they've well deserved that nine kills, so I don't think there's going to be a remake in progress. Uh, I think there's probably going to be a surrender at 20 0 and we can only hope that, uh, you know, Navi can come back into this game, but it, it'll be so, so hard. Yeah, I mean, especially with that Mundo disconnect, they're not going to have a jungler. They're obviously going to be way, way behind in uh, the likes of a tank, because Mundo is very, very tanky, get, has great maneuverability as well. And this is just going to basically allow Nautilus, with that the Oracle, to just continually roam around the jungle there and pick up any wards. So this is kind of... Uh, the, the lost hope kind of case here. We are 16 minutes 30 through the game, 9 to 0 with the tower up. Ordinarily, that wouldn't be enough to, to warrant kind of the GG coming in. But if Mundo is having severe technical difficulties with his internet or his PC, 4v5 in this kind of situation is, I hate to say it, Andy, but it's kind of unwinnable. Yeah, 4v5 when you're 9 kills down, there's no way in hell you're going to you know get back for that. But I think you should take it away then, spot lane. Indeed, as Ergot is going to go down there, NC, uh, just basically getting completely crushed. He's been forced to push forward in that lane because the tower is down, so he's been definitely overextended, very vulnerable to attack, and that's exactly what we saw there, with once again Nautilus being involved in, a, in another ganking attempt there. So Nautilus currently, as he said, NC's been involved with a lot of the kills so far. He has three kills and four assists, hasn't died yet, has had the Oracle since about minute five or six, so he's just been roaming around, taking the wards out of the equation, and it's important to note that Tristan is on five for zero with one assist. She already has the Infinity Edge, so that's going to be painful. Yeah. Sorry, I was just looking at Nautilus right now, and he's, I think he's lagging or something. He's running back. He he basically nearly had red buff. Um, I, I don't know what's going on. Top lane though, Enzi, gonna have Warwick chasing after Olaf. Oliver has managed to somehow get away so far. He's popped the Ragnarok, but I don't think it's gonna save him here. It's Warwick with that blood scent. It's just gonna chase him below the tower. Indeed, will pick up the kill and managed to escape as well. And I think that Olaf popped Ghost on top of that additionally. But here comes Ken, and perhaps this is gonna be a kill for the team there on try. They have managed to pick it up. And coincidentally enough, that is the first kill that uh, Navi have managed to actually take down here at that top lane. And overall, another Killed perhaps on the cars for try here at bot lane. Is Tristan is going to jump up there onto the Urgot. Could be going down from the tower though. Indeed she will be. So the shutdown has came in from Urgot. Who will pick himself up 492 gold for that kill. And this is one of the differences that we mentioned before in the patch, Enzi. You do get higher amounts of gold if you do shut down the enemy team. So Urgot finding himself with just shy of 500 gold is back pocket for that kill. But still 2-12 to 12 down. Fortunately enough, Belmundo has reconnected. So there is perhaps... A slight glimmer of hope here at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, I think it was just a bit of lag on Van's side uh, on Nautilus there. Sorry for uh, that kind of randomness, but you know, you know, with that gold, uh, you know, the gold increase that you get, um, you know, they're only something uh, like 8k down. So uh, they can actually get back into this game. They just need to level up a bit more, um, just work as a team. But but still, you know, they still have that advantage they still have that one tower as well uh, in team fights i think it's going to be so so hard for navi to come back from this considering you've got the likes of kennan in there janet as well and uh, tris absolutely and uh, dragon is back up again enzy so perhaps try can pick up their second consecutive dragon here i can't really see how navi can uh, can hope to steal this one especially as there is a ward just next to the wraiths and also a ward in the wraith bush so they have great visibility to try uh, a ward has came down but instantly going to get taken out there from kenan and janna and that uh, they don't actually have any wards apart from just the one on the dragon pit so of course nautilus with the oracle if he decides to go into the dragon pit we'll see that run straight away I take it down and then there will be zero visibility from Navi but looks like they're not too interested in that dragon as of yet just gonna allow Tristana to continually farm she has managed to pick up 185 creep score to Urgot's 106 that is a painful painful difference here it looks like dragon is now on the cards but without that Oracle from Nautilus they don't actually know there's a ward there so obviously Navi know what's going on the question is though can they do anything and the answer is a resounding no his dragon has already been taken from try before Navi could even get close there so just goes to show again Enzi the kind of damage output that uh, try are doing right now 
yeah, Zig's not even confident that, you know, he can go for that steal maybe with his ultimate. Uh, that what makes his, you know, his ultimate very useful, you know, he can steal the bus, he can steal the dragon, uh, but, you know, they had really no vision, so uh, he wasn't going to risk that one, because they might need it in a fight anytime soon. You know, Baron is on the cards now, I mean, it's 21 minutes in, try, have a very big advantage, and they want to get this done. They want to get this over and done with his top lane, I think Warwick should be going down. Yeah, Warwick should be going down here, so the Mega Inferno Bomb comes in, but Janna actually will push back Warwick and eat the Mega Inferno Bomb. Uh, there is somehow, some way, we do have a 1 for 1 exchange, even though Warwick was basically in a 1 versus 4 situation, he used the ultimate under Underneath his tower, and now Ziggs has came to help him out. Having said that, though, Ziggs could now find himself in all kinds of trouble. Is here comes Nautilus with the rest of his team. Depth charge has been used onto the Ziggs. Ziggs, in the meantime, though, will somehow take down Tristana. The amount of damage that she's doing actually is absolutely sensational, but she's gonna get killed here from Kennen surely. As here comes Nautilus as well. Olaf will pick up the pieces. Mundo now gonna try his luck onto that Nautilus. Has the bling agony. Landing infective clears, but I think he's also gonna go south. Six for under from Olaf. Big, big hit there. The boom. Boom, baby, from Olaf will take him down. And now Olaf pulls back 15 for 5. Oh, my dear God, this is looking quite one sided. Yeah, I, I can't think you can say anymore, you know, but uh, you know, they should have had work down much, much quicker than that. Uh, but you know, Janna came to the enemy's rescue and uh, pushed him away there and just air, uh, air bomb. And that's about it. But I think work is going to chase them down. He is going to chase him down with Blood Center. Of course, he's actually going to ultimate Nautilus underneath the tower, but Olaf doing all kinds of damage here, and I think Warwick could end up dying here without actually picking up the kill onto Nautilus. For a second, I thought Tristana was going to ultimate Warwick onto Nautilus, and he was going to be able to pick up the kill wow. just before he went down. Now Tristana's going to get the double kill onto Soraka, and I mean, we have said this a couple of times, and it is looking one-sided. I think the curtain is starting to come down here. 17 for 5. You got Tristana 90, 195 creep score there. Thereabouts. She has the Infinity Edge building towards the Phantom Dancer as well, and Baron has just been marked, so maybe going to be on the card here. That top tower has finally been taken out the equation, but yeah, it's, it's looking kind of nasty here, and I kind of feel sorry for Citizen here with Ziggs, because he's by and large been doing a great job. He's got 265 creep score, top creep score on the server, has Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, and Sork Shoes, so he's doing a lot of damage there, but the problem is that no one else is really following it up. It's great that he does all this burst damage, but once his uh, abilities are on cooldown, it's kind of like, okay, guys, you take over. Oh, wait, we have no more damage. We're dead. Yeah, that is the problem. I mean, you can have one great, great player all you want, but if you're behind this much, and you just can't do... You can't do everything, you know. When that them cooldowns come into play, you need your team to step up their game and do some damage, and they just simply haven't got it at the moment. I mean, he, he's got two kills. That's the highest kill number on the team right now and that's disappointing you look on the other side you've got Triss on nine to two and then you've also got Kenan following up with two Nautilus with three and Olaf with three so you know when them cooldowns come in even though Triss is you know mainly just auto attack based um even if she goes down there's still going to be damage there and that's the problem with Navi right now they have one source of damage and there's nothing following that one up I mean, if you look at the likes of an Urgot, yeah, he, he's got Frozen Heart, which is going to be nice against the likes of a Tristana, but he's not really doing big damage. He has a Brutalizer. But then you look at Tristana, and there's a massive discrepancy there. Tristana is going to be putting out all kinds of damage. That's not even taking into equation the likes of Olaf, who has the Warmog's armor and the Chain Vest, could definitely be going towards the Atmars, although it was actually nerfed in the previous patch. So perhaps not. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, there just isn't that much damage coming out here. Kennen as well has got the Abyssal Sept, which of course will uh, reduce the magic resist of nearby enemy champions by 20, which of course with Slicey Maelstrom, his ultimate will be doing so Oh, so much damage, and he also has picked up the uh, the giant spell and a hextech revolver, so he's going to be relatively tanky on top of all that as well. And I think Try are maybe waiting around for Dragon here, or are they going to try and go into the opposition jungle? Not too sure about this one because this could theoretically give Navi an opportunity to try and take that Baron. But doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Is that uh, Navi instead? Are just going to push and take down the mid tower instead? As uh, they must have realised, you know, try probably pushing down towards bot lane. Let's just try and apply some pressure in that mid. And uh, now try are just kind of lurking around that mid area. Are you here, Enzi? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you may have lagged or something then. 
No, I am here. But yeah, I, I did hear what you said about the Baron. They could have actually went for it, but they decided not to. Um, I don't think they've, you know, they haven't got the wall coverage to do so, so they wasn't going to risk it, and they were a bit too afraid of try, but I think there could be a team fight kicking off very shortly. But the damage from Ziggs is so, so good, just on Barracoon right there. Yeah, I mean, you have to say that, you know, try right now, if a team fight goes out underneath that Baron, you have to favor them to pick it up. They're so far ahead in farms, so far ahead in levels, they are just way, way stronger right now as it stands than Navi. Navi are trying their best to slowly but surely claw their way back into this game, and uh, perhaps it's going to be a Baron Steel that does just that. We have seen this a couple times, Enzi. Baron Steels can win you matches. Seen it time and time again in the Corsair Avengers Cup. Perhaps that's what Navi are really trying to set themselves towards. They're not really moving from the, this mid kind of uh, tower. Ziggs is going to go and pick up the walls. The rest of his team just kind of camping in mid, and this is going to allow Try to just kind of pull around, maybe pick up some extra farm and uh, get themselves slightly stronger, but definitely going to be Baron based here. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really going to come down to that Baron buff. You know, either team can really get it, but you will favor Try in this circumstance, so it's going to be very interesting to see who can pick this one up and then take it home. Absolutely. Dragon is also up, so that's also another potential option here for either team to try and pick up, but again, looks like Try going to push up towards the Baron buff. Uh, looks like Navi again just kind of playing cat and mouse here. Nobody really wants to overextend and make a mistake, but it could be Warwick who pushes in here. He's going to get absolutely destroyed. Here comes the slicing maelstrom from Kennen as well. Big, big damage. Mega on Funnel Bomb doing such huge cataclysmic damage in the meantime, though. But again, nothing to follow up on. And now Olaf is just going to plow through, gets the triple. Can he pick up the quad as well? Looking likely he will actually get the quadra kill. Could we see a pentakill coming up from Olaf? He's going to be chasing onto that Urgot. I don't think he cares about the tower. He wants that pentakill. He's hungry for it. And underneath this tower, you can kind of see the rest of his team are just leaving him to it. Will he pick up it? No, he won't pick it up. It's Tristana realizing, hold on a second, maybe Olaf isn't going to get this kill. I'll just steal it. And then Olaf gets killed off the tower. Ouch. But still, Quadra kill, great play from him. And now, of course, Baron and Dragon are completely free for try to pick up if they so choose. Twist was like, You ain't stealing my thunder, girl. I'm on 10 kills. And it was just like, No, you're not having the penna kill. Uh, you can have a Quadra, but you're not having a penna. It's not Christmas yet. And uh, I think that's really going to uh, seal the deal for this game. I think Try, you know, they're going to go on and win this right now after that team fight. Um, there was only one kill in it, and that's because Olaf got a bit too greedy and was just like, Herpy derpy derp, can I please get this penna kill? No, the tower's going to kill me, and Triss will nick it. Sad face. So, uh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> think Try is going to pick this one up. It was almost like Trist was like, go on, off, go on, I'll, I'll let you have the kill. Like, nah, troll, I, got, I take it, you dead. Sorry, mate. <laughs> they kind of waited off there and allowed Olaf to pick it up, but I think, you know, they, they kind of maybe panicked or Tristana came in with the uh, the epic troll there, then picked up the kill. But still, I mean, you have to give props to Olaf for doing, doing so, so much damage there. He has actually picked up the, uh, the Quicksilver Sash, so he's going to be very, very tanky, even more tanky than before, if you can believe that. And uh, with 7-2-3 as his statistics, he is looking very, very strong indeed. As you said, though, Tristana picking up that last kill, 10 to 5 are her stats right now. Going to be pushing down towards that dragon. They didn't actually attempt the Baron buff, so obviously wanted to, uh, to opt to play a tiny bit safer. Don't want to give that Baron away. They're now in the driver's seat. They know they're in a driver's seat by quite a long distance. You know, NZ, Baron isn't always essential. If you are ahead by enough, you don't really need to take the risk by picking it up. I think the main, the main team that won Baron right now is just Navi, because that... I think that can really get them back into the game. Uh, that you know, there's no guarantee, even if they get it, if they're going to get back into this game because TRI are so so far ahead. So even if they do get Baron, I still think they're probably going to lose this game because as soon as they've done Baron, and if TRI are right around the corner, they're going to be able to capitalize on it, and they're all going to be half HP, and they're going to be like, boom, 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 you're dead. Yeah, but uh, I just I have to feel sorry for Citizen here on Ziggs. He's got 356 creep score, the top creep score by a mile and a half. But again, there's there's just not really anything after him. I mean, he kind of pops off all his abilities, does loads and loads of damage, and he's expecting somebody else to go in and kind of pick up the pieces. Nothing happens. So uh, it looks like we are going to see, once again, this kind of dance-off on Baron. Warwick is going to go in first. The question is, is he going to get caught out once again, as we saw last time, with Kennen just jumping in with that ultimate, and Olaf picking up all of the pieces on the rest of the team. Uh, bar that final one that Tristana got, looks like uh, actually... 
probably really aren't going to be too bothered about pushing mid or baron. They're just, I think they're waiting for somebody to make the wrong move here and just, you know, try and capitalize on that slight mistake. But here comes Nautilus. He has seen two wards down in that bush. He's going to try and take them both out of the equation. Ziggs is just going to spam his way across. He has that blue buff, so uh, by and large, he's going to be able to spam those bouncing bombs to his heart's content. And now we could potentially see the baron as the whole of Tri are going to start to converge on this area. They're going to start off the baron. There are no wards. So this is a really precarious position for Navi. They don't know if they should push in or not. As they didn't have ward coverage there. And the, the Drab Baron is already actually going to be down. And Mega Infernal Bomb was used there from the Ziggs to try and steal the Baron. But unfortunately for him, it was too late. Now Kenan and Tristana coming in with big damage. It's going to be a third kill as well from Tristana picking up her double. Now going to be after this Ziggs and Urgot. Ziggs on absolutely no health should surely go down in a heartbeat. Somehow manages to escape though. Urgot trying his best to fend off the onslaught. But Ziggs is going to go down regardless from Kenan. That's going to be another kill from Tristana who picks up her third kill in that team fight and the ace as well 27 for six and the ggs are being exchanged so it looks like that is going to be game number one going into the hands of try what a confident game i mean early game they had a lockdown mid game they had a lockdown and you know going into the later stages of the game they had it locked down and like like you said you know all through that game i feel sorry for citizen right there he was doing so so good so much damage as well but you know there was no one to follow it up yeah i'm kind of tempted to give him mvp there of that game because of just how well he did with the creep score. He finished on 359, 11.1k gold, which is the second biggest on the entire game there. The top being Tristana with 13.5k. As you'd expect the amount of kills that she ended up having with 13 kills and 5 assists. So it just goes to show how well Citizen was playing there. But unfortunately, he really didn't have anyone to back him up in that game and that's why ultimately they lost. I think if there was at least one more player, you know, who was kind of keeping up with Ziggs there, I think they could have actually got back into that game. But, you know, on the other team, you had the likes of Nautilus, you had Olaf, and you had Triss. You had three players, you know, doing absolutely great. And Kennen, you know, uh, as the later stages did come on, he did, he was, you know, up in his game. Because in lane, you must say, you know, Ziggs kind of won that. Um, you could say dominated in a way. Uh, if you compare the creep score, but either way, you know, TRI are going to take game number one. This is the lower bracket, guys, by the way, and it is a best of three, so if uh, Navi do win this uh, game coming up, then they're going to stay in, they're going to play a third map. If they don't, then they are completely out of this tournament. Yeah, I mean, as you said, you'd have to say that Ziggs won his lane, and he won it quite comfortably. At one stage, he was 40, 50 creep score ahead. I believe it was about eight or nine minutes, maybe a bit later on than that. But either way, I remember commenting at the time, really, Ziggs is the only player on Navi right now that is winning his lane. Bot lane had been completely crushed from the Nautilus ganks. Top lane had been completely crushed from the Nautilus ganks. So mid was really the only level playing field in that respect. And of course, you have to say, say as well, Enzi, that Mundo did disconnect, and it's very possible that he had lag issues throughout that game, which could have been one of the reasons why why he was definitely kind of just desolate in the jungle. He wasn't really doing much. But, you know, if he had lag, fair play to him. Either way, guys, I think we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. We'll wait for the invite for game number two here between Troy and Navi. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back after these. Oh, guys, okay, we're not going to cut to a quick commercial break just yet. I've just been informed from Bass, our producer, that apparently Spanish internet right now, at least two of the players on Navi's team, is having all kinds of troubles. So they're trying to reschedule the game right now so that they don't basically play a 3v5. So we will give you updates as and when we find out any further information. But right now, it could potentially be the case that game number two doesn't happen today. Can I, can I add something? Go for it. I just want a little announcement, guys. Um, Jackie Chan recently met the President of the United States, and apparently they shook hands. I just want to applaud that. <laughs> we can always count on Enzi for some random banter, that's for sure. <laughs> just out of nowhere. But yeah, guys, we'll, uh, we'll cut to a quick commercial break while we try and figure out what's going on with game number two, but it could definitely be a case that we don't see the, the finale of the two potential games coming up here in the Corsair Vengeance Cup tonight. It will be rescheduled, but either way, don't worry, we do have two more epic encounters coming up later. So stay tuned, and hopefully we'll be back very shortly with good news. <laughs> 